डियर व्यूवर्स दृष्टि आई एस वेलकम्स यू टू द न्यू सीरीज ऑफ सिंप्लीफाइड इन दिस सीरीज वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज टैक्स दैट इज जी एस टी इन द पार्ट टू द डायमेंशन वी आर गोइंग टू कवर आर टैक्स लॉस बिफोर जी एस टी एलिजिबल फॉर जी एस टी जी एस टी कैलकुलेशन वॉट इज द जी एस टी रिटर्न एंड वॉट आर द न्यू कंप्लायसेज अंडर जी एस टी सो लेट्स बिगिन विद टैक्स लॉस बिफोर जी एस टी इन द अर्लियर इन डायरेक्ट टैक्स रिजाइन देर वर मेनी इन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस डिवाइड बाय बोथ द स्टेट एंड द सेंटर स्टेट्स मेनली कलेक्टेड टैक्सेस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वैट दैट इज वैल्यू एडिड टैक्स Every state had a different set of rules and regulations. Interstate sale of goods was taxed by the center. CST that is central state tax was applicable in case of interstate sale of goods. Under the old taxation system, the central taxes applicable were custom duty or central excise duty. Central sales tax on commodities and services, surcharge and cesses. The state taxes included state VAT, WCT, entertainment tax, luxury tax, tax on gambling, betting and lottery, sales tax deducted at source, and surcharge and cesses. Under VAT, tax will be levied at the place where goods are manufactured or sold. or the place at which services are rendered and the registration is decentralized under state and central authorities under vat the system will partly validate the returns and full verification will be subject to assessments by state or central authorities under vat cst is charged at a concessional rate of 2% so far as interstate transfers are concerned against c forms the full rate applicable otherwise ranges from 5% to 14.5% under vat certain areas such as the north east will be able to enjoy exemptions now let's understand who are eligible for gst e-commerce aggregators and individuals who supply through e-commerce aggregators individuals who pay tax as per the reverse charge mechanism agents of input service distributors and suppliers non resident individuals who pay tax businesses that have a turnover that is more than the threshold limit and individuals who have registered before the gst law was introduced Now let's understand about the GST calculation. Under the new tax structure, there are different GST rates applicable at different categories. These are 0%, 5%, 12%, 18%, and 28%. These are necessary while calculating GST. Different tax heads under GST are GST can be categorized into four different heads such as state goods and services tax that is SGST in this state government collects this tax central goods and services tax that is CGST in this central government collects this tax union territory goods and services tax that is UTGST and the union territory government collects this tax and integrated goods and services tax that is igst it is collected by the central government for interstate transactions and imports igst is applied to interstate products where the supplier of the product is in a different state and the product is supplied in a different state gst calculation formula helps to calculate net price of the product after application of gst and removing gst as well the formula for gst calculation is add gst 
GST amount is equal to original cost into GST percent divided by 100 and the net price is equal to original cost plus GST amount. Now let's discuss what is the GST return. The businesses registered under GST have to file returns monthly, quarterly and annually based on the category of business through the Government of India's GST portal. GST return is an official document that furnishes all the purchases, sales, tax paid on the purchases and tax collected on sales related details. The GST returns are required to be filed following which the taxpayer has to pay off the tax liability. GST returns have to be filed by all the business entities who are registered under the GST system. The filing process has to be identified on the basis of the nature of the business. The registered dealer who part of the following activities needs to file a GST return. Sales, purchase, output goods and services tax on sales and input tax credit with GST paid on the purchase. Now lastly, let's understand what are the new compliances under GST. First is e-way bills. GST introduced a centralized system of way bills by the introduction of e-way bills. This system was launched on 1st April 2018 for interstate movement of goods and on 15th April 2018 for intrastate movement of goods in a staggered manner. The generation of e-way bill could be barred if a supplier or recipient does not file GST returns for two consecutive tax periods. Under the e-way bill system, manufacturers, traders and transporters can generate e-way bills for the goods transported from the place of origin to its destination on a common portal with ease. Tax authorities are also benefited as this system has reduced time at check post and helps reduce tax evasion. Next is e-invoicing. E-invoice is a system in which B2B invoices are authenticated electronically by GSTN for further use on the common GST portal. Under the electronic invoicing system, an identification number will be issued against every invoice by the invoice registration portal that is IRP to be managed by the GST network that is GSTN. All invoice information is transferred from eInvoice1.gst.gov.in portal to both the GST portal and eWay bill portal in real time. Therefore, it eliminates the need for manual data entry while filing GSTR1 return as well as generation of Part A of the eWay bills as the information is passed directly by the IRP to the GST portal and HSN code. With effect from the 1st April 2021, it has been made mandatory for a GST taxpayer having turnover of more than Rs 5 crore in the preceding financial year to furnish six digits HSN code, that is Harmonized System of Nomenclature Code, or as the case may be, SAC, that is Service Accounting Code, on the invoices issued for suppliers of taxable goods and services. A taxpayer having turnover of up to Rs 5 crore in the preceding financial year is required to mandatorily furnish four digits HSN code on B2B invoices. HSN codes for goods at six digits are universally common. Therefore, common HSN codes apply to customs and GST. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.